How the solar system formed has remained largely a mystery, though there are several theories about it. It's generally accepted that Jupiter formed first, though what happened next is significantly debated. Some think Jupiter spiraled inward and nearly destroyed the inner solar system, though from what I can tell, this is generally considered to be unlikely. Or the five planet Nice model suggests that interactions between the four outer planets of our system resulted in the ejection of an ice giant, making it a rogue planet. While not confirmed, the fifth giant is pretty interesting on its own. If it actually existed, which it might not have, then we know that as planetary systems form, not all planets make it. Some collide with each other, like Earth and Theia, and some get ejected, like the hypothetical unconfirmed fifth giant. And while every star system forms differently, it seems that chaos is the common denominator between all of them. And one such system is Upsilon Andromedae. Upsilon Andromedae is probably one of the most interesting planetary systems we've ever found. It hosts two stars, the large F-type Tidowin, and the smaller red dwarf Upsilon Andromedae b. All three of its known planets orbit Tidowin. They're all gas giants, and include the large hot Jupiter with a very low density Sapphire, the warm borderline brown dwarf Som, and the giant tempered gas giant Majority. Majority is in Tidowin's habitable zone, where temperatures are right for liquid water to exist, and is ten times more massive than Jupiter. That's bigger than every planet in the solar system combined, but is still smaller than Som, which is 14 times Jupiter's mass. Both of these planets are so big they're on the border of becoming brown dwarfs, and are far bigger than Sapphire, which is just 1.7 Jupiter masses. Because of Majority's large size and its location in the habitable zone, it might have a decent chance of hosting Earth-like moons. Larger planets usually have larger moons, and Majority is likely massive enough to have potentially formed with moons just as large, if not larger, than Earth. It's probably one of the most likely planets we know of to host habitable Earth-like moons, though its chances are still low. Its moons, if it even has any large ones, could have a whole host of other environments, from airless to Venus-like to Mars-like, instead of being like Earth. But for more information about the system, watch my Grand Tour of Upsilon Andromeda video. But anyway, Upsilon Andromeda's planets are massive. For comparison, if you combined every planet, moon, asteroid, comet, dwarf planet, and dust particle in the solar system together, the resulting object would be about two times the mass of Jupiter. The combined mass of the Upsilon Andromeda planets are somewhere around 26 times the mass of Jupiter, with a decent amount of uncertainty. Because these planets are so large, they pull on each other a lot. Sam and Majority are particularly both large enough and close enough together that they can significantly alter each other's orbits. This is probably why Majority has a high orbital eccentricity of 0.3. The thing is, this probably had drastic effects on the system as it was forming. Even to this day, Sam and Majority are still affecting one another. But in the past, when the orbits hadn't yet stabilized, and there was a massive amount of dust and debris in the way, this was probably greatly exaggerated. The way the Upsilon Andromeda planets are interacting with one another today also raises some questions. Majority pulls on Som's orbit to such an extent that its eccentricity varies wildly, its orbit becomes roughly circular every 9,000 years. For the planets to be evolving together like that, something must have happened in the system to perturb them. And that's what this study suggests. Early in Upsilon Andromeda's history, a disaster might have occurred. In this scenario, there were additional planets that formed in Upsilon Andromeda that eventually caused the entire system to fall into chaos. If it's true, Sam and Majority billions of years ago ejected one, or even potentially two planets from the system, causing Majority's eccentricity to spike, pull on Sam, and resulted in the coupled evolution we see today. I should quickly clarify that right now, this theory is based on the assumption that Sapphire, Sam, and Majority are the only large planets in the system currently. This is actually more likely than it may seem. Because Sam and Majority, and to a lesser extent Sapphire, are so massive, their gravities are very good at destabilizing other nearby planets. There are areas of stability in the system where additional planets could technically exist, but it's also generally thought that any planet bigger than Jupiter existing within 5 AU of the star would make the entire Upsilon Andromeda system unstable and so cannot exist. All three planets are close enough to the star to make inner rocky planets impossible. There's also the star Upsilon Andromeda b to consider, which is about 750 AU away from Tidowin, and would destabilize planets on very wide orbits. A few years ago, a fourth planet, Upsilon Andromeda e, was suspected to exist in the system that was extremely similar to Jupiter in both mass and orbit, but it's since been disproven and is no longer expected to exist. There is definitely still the chance for additional planets in Upsilon Andromeda, but it's not particularly likely, and there's also a good chance that these three planets are all Tidowin has. However, this theory would need to be reevaluated if another large planet were to be found in the system. So anyways, somewhere around 3 billion years ago, Upsilon Andromeda begins forming. 
The study uses a hypothetical planetary system similar to Upsilon Andromeda to model this, but if this theory is correct, then this could pretty much be what happened in real life with the real Upsilon Andromeda. Based on what we currently know about planet formation, Psalm probably forms first, with Majority shortly after, and Sapphar not long after that. But Sapphar being an isolated hot Jupiter significantly smaller than the other two doesn't really matter. It's pretty interesting on its own that a planet nearly double the size of Jupiter plays a negligible role in this case, but that's beside the point. Anyway, Psalm and Majority form with pretty much circular orbits, unlike the eccentricity of the 0.26 and 0.3 they have today. Psalm's orbit lasts around 250 days, pretty much identical to how it is today, while Majority's is around 2,100 days, which is far longer than its current year of 1,276 days. This puts it firmly outside the habitable zone, meaning if this is true, it started out pretty cold. This actually means something important if it has any moons, as the further away you get from a star during its formation, the more ice there is. So if Majority has any large moons, they might be more water-rich than they otherwise would be if it had formed in the habitable zone, assuming this theory is true. Anyways, in this case, a fourth outer planet with a mass about 90% larger than Jupiter forms, with an orbital period of around 3,300 days. This would make it much smaller than Salma Majority, but a bit bigger than Sapphar. I'll be calling this object Planet 4 to keep it simple. It obviously doesn't have an official name, since we have no idea if it even actually existed or not. Because of Majority and 4 sizes and distances from one another, the two are almost at their dynamical stability limit. While all this is occurring, and Majority and 4 are nearly at the limit of having their orbits destabilize, Psalm is pretty much calm, having a very circular orbit with a low eccentricity, and Sapphire continues to not matter at all. But right now, Majority and 4 aren't actually becoming unstable, they're simply close to the limit of being stable. That might require the existence of a fifth planet. The study says that Planet 4 could become unstable without the need for an additional planet, though a Planet 5 on an even wider orbit would help make the instability come faster. Eventually, for some reason, whether that be just migration as the system is forming or interactions with an even more hypothetical fifth planet, Majority and Planet 4 reach dynamical instability, and Upsilon Andromeda falls into chaos. Planet 4's orbit destabilizes and it's ejected from the system entirely, becoming a rogue planet. Majority quickly spirals inward, nearly cutting its orbital period in half as its eccentricity skyrockets. Suddenly, Psalm is being pulled on much more powerfully by Majority, causing its eccentricity to spike as well. Majority enters the habitable zone and its orb begins either circulating or librating with Psalms. This means the two planets interact with each other, mutually influencing each other's orbit. This could result in the cycle we might see today, of Majority's gravity causing Psalm's orbit to circulate and become highly eccentric every 9,000 years. Coincidentally, Planet 4 takes about 9,000 years to leave the system, and the resulting evolution makes Planet 5's gravitational effects insignificant, assuming it exists, which it might not. The interactions between Psalm and Majority are strong enough that no additional planets can change it all that much, so even if there is a Planet 5, it doesn't matter. Just like Sapphire. Obviously, this theory is far from confirmed. The only evidence we have of Planet 4's existence is the interactions between Psalm and Majority. Several other things could have caused it. For example, Majority could have just formed in the habitable zone, removing the need for a fourth planet entirely. However, giant planets usually form further away from their stars, so this might be unlikely, though more data is needed to say anything for certain. The existence of Planet 5 is even less confirmed. There's no evidence for it at all, the only reason the study even mentions it is because it helps speed up Planet 4's instability, but is by no means required. Planet 4's existence has even less evidence for it than the solar system's hypothetical fifth giant, which I mentioned at the beginning of the video. The ejection of a planet in Upsilon Andromeda is one of the many things that would have resulted in what we see today. But it is pretty interesting nonetheless, and it means a few interesting things for the system. As I mentioned earlier, if Majority formed further away from its star, then the chances of its potential moons having large amounts of water becomes more likely. Of course, just because an object has water, that doesn't automatically make it similar to Earth. Majority's eccentricity makes it have large seasonal changes, with short summers as it moves closer to the star and long winters. The same would be true of its moons. And this would happen to Psalm as well. And remember, Psalm is bigger than Majority, so has an even greater potential for large moons. Though it is closer to Tidewin, so probably has a less extensive moon system. While Psalm isn't in the habitable zone, the chance for it to have some Venus or Mercury-like moons, or even hot Io-like ones, or a whole host of other environments is there. And because of its eccentric orbit, they'll have noticeable seasonal changes as well. But unlike Majority, Psalm's orbit may become circular every 9,000 years. 
So, every 9,000 years, Psalm and its potential moons have only their axial tilt to rely on for seasons, not their eccentricity, leading to different types of seasonal changes. Whatever happened in Upsilon Andromedae, whether it be a planet being ejected from the system or something else, it still has big effects on its planets and their potential moons today. Except for Sapphire, of course. But the ejection of planets as a system is forming isn't unique to Upsilon Andromedae. Even the solar system might have experienced it. And there's a potential for billions of stars across the Milky Way to have experienced it as well. There are almost certainly more rogue planets than stars in this galaxy, with some estimates saying that there's anywhere from 8 to 40 rogue planets for every star. Whether Upsilon Andromedae's Planet 4 is among them, or if it even exists, is still up for debate, and we likely won't know for a very long time. But if it did exist, then Planet 4 now has a future just like the hundreds of billions to trillions of rogue planets across the galaxy. Total darkness and isolation for the rest of eternity, while its long lost siblings of Sam and Majretti get the opportunity for seasons and maybe even habitable moons. To confirm this, we'll need to study Upsilon Andromedae a lot more. If we find a fourth planet, that could break this theory, depending on where it is and how big it is. Finding out Majretti's composition would be helpful as well, as that could indicate where it formed. But unfortunately, we probably won't know this stuff for a while. Until then, Upsilon Andromeda is clearly an extremely interesting system, shaped by the two giant planets that reside in it. If you want to know more, check out my grand tour of Upsilon Andromeda, where I talk about each planet in more depth. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, check out my other videos about space and space colonization.